Hey everyone, I'm Solomon with ClickX. Today's marketing hack is really going back to the basics. Today, we're talking about all the different terminologies that you need to know to be a better marketer, all right? Because I need to amp up your knowledge because if you want to use all the stuff that you see on our channel or if you're reading other content or consuming other videos, you need to make sure that you understand the basics. And I see that a lot of marketers are sending me emails saying, hey, I don't really understand what you mean by these things. So I'm gonna take this video to help you get that knowledge, all right? Let's get started. Marketing Hack of the Day is brought to you by ClickX. Listen folks, I met a lot of intelligent people that are running multi-million dollar businesses, big brands, conglomerates, even multinational brands that wouldn't even know what an impression is when I talk to them about advertising. And it hurts me because if you're not in the digital marketing bubble, you kind of have no idea what these things are, right? If you don't know Google Analytics, if you haven't really taken the training, if you're not really familiar with it because you, you work for a brand or exposed to analytics, you kind of don't have any idea on what these things mean, whether it's acquisition or bounce rate or anything like that. And I continue to get those kinds of emails. If you're really trying to take it to the next level, use some growth hacks to get more traffic and leads and conversions, you need to make sure that you understand the basics. All right, so first off, acquisition. I wanna talk about acquisition. What does that mean? In Google Analytics, it's really a report that contains your high level overview of how visitors are coming to your website. Really, you just need to understand that your acquisition is the, is the report in which you see all the different channels people are using to come to your website. What do I mean by that? I mean like your organic visits, your, your paid visits, if you're doing referral, if you're doing social, all that will be under acquisition. It's just acquiring users to your website that's what the acquisition report shows just so you understand that when i talk about acquisition when you read that that's what it means an average session duration is really the measurement of the time visitors spend on your website so average session that means that if they're on your website session is the time that they're spending the average session duration is really calculated by taking all the sessions dividing by the number of sessions that you have right so all the time people are spending divided by the number of people, and then you get the average session duration. If you're trying to increase the amount of time people are spending on your website, you need to look at average session duration to see how little time they spend. Maybe they're only spending 10 seconds, maybe they're spending 20 minutes, and that might be really good for your industry. Maybe you wanna have them come back and stay longer. So you need to look at that so that you can actually fix that. Now, going on to bounce rate. Well, bounce rate is the number of or the percentage of visitors who enter your website but they leave your website without taking any action, all right? So if they entered your homepage of your website and they didn't click on contact us or they didn't click on your services, they didn't click on the about us, whatever pages that you have, they just left because they didn't like what they saw or they already got what they wanted, that's what a bounce rate is. The percentage of people that leave your site without making any sort of actions, without taking any actions, okay? So you can have high bounce rate, you can have low bounce rate. If you have a website with a lot of different things that they can do, they can click on to go learn more and experience this, click to get a quote, live chat, and all these things are happening, it's likely that you can lower that bounce rate because you can actually send your user to another inner page, get them to take and visit another page which reloads the Google cookie and it lowers your bounce rate. Like I said, certain instances when you have a landing page without any other outlet, they can't click out to go anywhere, it is possible to have high bounce rate, all right? Now you might be asking me what's a really bad bounce rate, what's a really good bounce rate? I like to say if you have 50% bounce rate, that's like average across different industries. If you can get it down to lower 40% bounce rate, 30% bounce rate, I've seen 30s and 20s. Because there's just, like people aren't leaving, they just love the content. But if they have 80% bounce rate, if you have 99% bounce rate, you gotta work on something. Because you're not exciting your users, and they're not happy, and they're leaving, and that means that you're never gonna get them to convert. All right, moving on to campaigns. Campaigns are basically, what you would tag your traffic, so the incoming traffic that you're getting, you're tagging it with a custom UTM from Google, you know, URL Builder or whatever it is, and it actually allows you to see all those tagged traffic under one place in your Google Analytics. So in our integration in ClickX with Google Analytics, we actually have the Campaigns tab right there, so you don't have to go to Google Analytics. You can just click on the Campaigns tab and you can actually see 
all your tagged traffic. So how do you tag something? You need to use a custom URL builder, uh, which is also built into ClickX. You just go and say, hey, I'm getting traffic from such and such site. This is a uh, AdWords campaign, or this is a another display campaign. This is a banner ads campaign. This is an email campaign. You go ahead and create you know, your source and your medium and all those things. It gives you a custom URLs that you need to send to your companies that you're working with or you upload it to your AdWords campaign, you upload it to your Facebook ads. And then you can actually see how much traffic you're gaining from your email campaigns. As long as it's tagged, Google Analytics recognizes it, it'll untangle all that information, puts it into the campaign section of your Google Analytics. Moving on to page views. Page views are really simple, just what it says. It's measuring the number of pages somebody's viewing on your website, all right? So if you wanted to actually use page views as a means to measure a goal, you can set something up like, hey, you know what? I wanna track people who visit, you know, five pages. People that view five pages, I wanna track that as a goal. You can actually set up a goal and just set up page views as a goal. Now, I don't know if that's a really good goal to see everyone who's seen five pages turns into a goal, but if your goal is to get people to uh, visit X amount of pages or you know, you know, have those pages refreshed 10 times, 20 times, maybe 20 is a really good number. If you can get them to visit 20 pages, I think you, you're off to something great. So if you can do that and you can set that up as a goal, it's just what it sounds like. It is just pages, nothing complicated, nothing fancy there, all right? Moving on to sources. Sources is basically, it tracks, right? It specifies how a visitor come to your website. How did they come to your website? You need to understand that. So let me give you an example. Search engine, it's a great source of traffic. Direct traffic, people that just punched in www.domain.com, right? Referral is a source. Anybody that has a link on their website, when they click on the link that comes to your website, it's a referral. Social media is a source. So that's what source means. It's just where the traffic is coming from. Now moving on to channels. Channels are really awesome because what you wanna do inside channels is you actually get to see the group of all the different sources coming together. So let us let me give you an example of the, the organic channel, right? So people are searching on Bing, which is a search engine. People are searching on Yahoo, it's another search engine, and they're searching on Google. And what Google would do is in Google Analytics, it will group all of them under one channel and give you the organic search. So this way you can actually get better insights in how that channel is performing instead of trying to get the data from Bing versus Google and combine it and finding an average, it's just simply click on the channels, you get that information much quicker. A conversion is basically achieved when your visitor reach an end goal, right? So you actually set up a conversion to, to track everybody that is going to sign up for your email newsletter, for instance. So you would set up as that as a conversion so you can track, hey, how many people actually converted or signed up for my newsletter? How many people downloaded an ebook? That would be another conversion. How many people actually made a purchase on our website? How many people actually filled out a form that is request a code or contact us? So those are actually conversions that you can track and that's what a conversion is. So it's basically you got traffic and you want them to actually convert and do something. Tracking that is what's considered a conversion. Direct traffic, very simple. Again, this is supposed to be very basic 101. This is not supposed to be complicated. Direct traffic is anyone that's been to your website, they actually punched in your domain name into their browser. So they said www.yourdomain.com. They put it in, they did not go to search engine, they just literally hit enter, they landed on your website directly from the browser and that's what's called a direct traffic. They did not go through a referral, they did not go to Google and punched in your company name and went to your website because if they went to Google, it would have come out as a organic search. If you're running paid ads, it will come out as a paid search traffic, not direct traffic. Now we're moving on to goals. Goals is something that you would set up in Google Analytics to track your visitors as they're making different moves. Like when they're doing those conversions, you wanna set them as a goal because if you set them as a goal, then that's how you track that conversion. So basically you would set up your newsletter as a goal. When somebody submits your newsletter and goes to a thank you page, when that thank you page is hit, you'll know it's a goal. And I've done several videos about this topic, so it's very easy. Check out our channel, you'll learn more about goals but you wanna make sure that everything is set up as a goal, a purchase is a goal. This is just like sports, when you actually hit the goal, you actually get a conversion, so that's precisely what I'm trying to say. It's like you just set up a goal, and as you have 10 or 
17 different goals on your website, you could track each goal separately, right? You want to make goals. You want to make as many goals as you possibly can make. As long as you have those macro conversions and those micro conversions that we talked about earlier, um, uh, you want to make sure that those are all set up as a goal. Maybe your micro conversion is just having them, you know, sign up for your email newsletter or just becoming a member, whatever that is for your website. And the macro conversion is you want them to buy something enormous, like a $2,000 purchase, right? You want them to do something big. That's really what you're trying to do. But, but if without goals, you wouldn't be able to track anything. And new sessions. New sessions are basically the number of first time visitors to your website. That means that I went to your website for the first time ever in my life and then I'm considered a new session, all right? It's a new session because below that I have sessions. Sessions are all the sessions that you have to your website. New sessions are just that one time. Sessions are every single time. People come to your website, it's considered a session, all right? So that's the difference between new sessions and sessions. Sessions were previously known as visits. Basically, you know, you want to track how many visits you get. It's the same thing. It's just called sessions now. And it reports how often users visit your website and which actions they actually take on each visit. So it's, again, just visits. Think about that, but it's called sessions because Google decided to change all the terminology on all of us. And I just want to make sure that you understand this new terminology, especially if you're looking at reports inside ClickX platform. You need to make sure that you understand your basics. And I want to make sure that you're not confused. You're not lost in anything. Uh, one thing to note about sessions, they actually set the interaction to 30 minutes long. So if you're on the website for 30 minutes or longer, the 31st minute actually becomes a new session, all right? So you need to know that, which is why I pay attention to the new sessions, uh, not just the total sessions. The last but not least, we're talking about users. Users are just people. Let me just try to dummy it down for you. You'll get to track how many people have visited your website the total number of people, right? It counts repeat visits as one. So if I go to the website over and over, I hit it all day long, 50 times a day, it's all considered one user because it doesn't want it to keep repeating it like sessions would. Because you'll have 50 new sessions, but only one user. As long as I didn't cook, clear my cookies, as long as I didn't you know, restart my browser and all that, you're okay, it's still considered one user, all right? So I hope you got a lot of insights as to all the terminologies that you read in Google Analytics or any other web analytics for that matter, especially if you're in the ClickX dashboard, we report on all these things because we want to make sure that you're very well aware of how your marketing is happening, how much traffic you're getting, from where you're getting traffic, whether or not you're getting conversions uh, and setting up those campaigns and getting new URLs. All these things are really important and you got to get a good understanding, a good grasp on the basics. Then only you can really excel and become that A-plus marketer I'd like you to be. So thank you again for watching another edition of Marketing Hack of the Day.